you shouldn't use Windows Firewall. Now, of course, no advice should be taken as a universal, but in this video, I'm going to demonstrate with the help of a classic backdoor Trojan, why I don't recommend using Windows Firewall and hopefully justify the title. Now, funnily enough, this isn't even because Windows Firewall is bad, but you'll see what I mean. Over here, we have our threat in Varstol. As you can see, it's very well recognized at this point. It is your usual miscreant, what you see in the Wild West, typical PEXE file. If we go into details, we will see that the first submission was around April 2020, and it's got quite a few interesting relations, but we'll get more into this later. Now we're going to simulate running this on a virtual machine and analyze its behavior, see what it does, and trust me, that'll take us straight to the point. So we'll create a new task, choose file, and then we'll go ahead and run. Looks like we're good to go on our test system. So we can see this executable, loading in memory, launching command prompt, loading more threads. And if we continue looking at what it's doing, you will see some interesting behavior. So, ooh, what do we have here? Command prompt. If we click on more info, cmd.exe, that's just command prompt, C, advanced firewall, firewall, add rule, CSRSS, direction in action, allow program, enable yes. Okay, looks fair enough. Um, let's look at some other stuff. Ooh, again, advanced firewall, firewall, add rule, add rule name, cloud net. Direction in action allow program. C users admin app data roaming. And this looks like a totally legit name. Enable yes. So there you go. That's the problem of using the firewall that you have on your host system. It is completely ineffective against any kind of malware attack because it's going to be disabled. Any malware that uses command and control, wants to call home, wants to reach out to any servers or exfiltrate your data is going to have this little command. And part of the point of having a firewall on your system is if you do get compromised by malware like this, maybe it's not able to steal your data or exfiltrate it. Maybe it's not able to download additional malware or the main ransomware payload on your system. But all of those functions are going to be rendered useless by this simple command, which if the malware is running on your system, it can totally do. So how do we get around it? Now, the best solution is obviously to have a hardware firewall that sits not on your system, but on the network level. Although any software other than Windows Firewall is probably going to fare better in this scenario. But again, best case, if you have a firewall at the router level, that ensures that it's completely separate from the system and it adds an additional layer of protection. Windows Firewall just isn't going to do that. Now let's continue looking at this thread to see what it does. So if we look at our DNS requests, we've got a couple of IPs here. Both of them communicated successfully and we got a response from 10gamestop.com. That does not seem like a real website, is it? Not really. You might say, well, it's 404 page not found. <laughs> what do you mean? Why is this a problem? Why are you concerned? Well. That's what you would expect to see if you try to navigate to a command and control server because they wouldn't have like a public facing website, but the server would be active. It would just serve some kind of, you know, general page, but in the background, it's uh, receiving data, it's doing stuff. And the fact that the domain is accessible and it's not a generic page not found suggests that there might actually be something going on there. Now, if we take a look at the connections, now these are all made out through Cloudflare to the US. And again, we've got a connection to this particular domain. Now let's explore this further with Fars Total Intelligence. So if we do a simple search for the URL, you will see that it's uh, detected by six engines. Now, if we open up graphs for the actual sample, we're going to see a lot of interesting stuff. So as you can see, this gives us a bird's eye view of all the relations that the file has. So this goes out to a bunch of IPs. These are the embedded domains. Definitely interesting. Now this just download uh, windowsupdate.com, same here. And over here we have the same DNS. So we're going to go ahead and explore this further.
And as you can see, this is linked to a lot of malicious stuff, not just websites, but also files. And look what we have here, csrss.exe, huh. One of the files that uh, we just made a firewall rule to allow. <laughs> well, we didn't, but our system did based on the malware actions. Now, if we go back to our actual test system, you will see that um, there's a lot of stuff going on in here. So there've been scheduled tasks for log on. And if we scroll down, this is the best part. We've got windefender.exe. So this malware is actually masquerading as Windows Defender. And again, I'm pretty sure it disables Windows Defender as well. And then it runs windefender.exe, which is the final drop malware executed as a Windows service. Now, keep in mind, none of this was the original file that we executed. All this malware was downloaded onto the system post execution. This is typically where your firewall would kick in and stop something like this from being able to contact its uh, home servers and download its friends, you know, start a party on your system. But unfortunately, if you're just relying on Windows Firewall on your system, it's likely going to be powerless to stop this because it'll be disabled. <laughs> it will be powerless to stop it, not even because it's bad or because it doesn't have these IPs blacklisted or it doesn't have the right rules. None of that matters because the moment the malware executes on the system, it's going to disable Windows Firewall. So there you have it. That's why I'm not a fan of uh, just relying on Windows Firewall on your system. So now that we've shown that it's gonna be ineffective against a typical Trojan, let's talk about what it is going to be effective for. Blocking all your games. Basically destroying any chance you have of getting a life. All the more reason to hate it. <laughs> I'm just joking, but seriously, it's always a good idea to keep your firewall separate from the operating system that you're running, just because, as I said, malware executing on the system is going to be able to disable it. But if the firewall is located at a different level, this could not have happened. I bet even if you had like a different software firewall, it might have worked. And I think this is something a lot of people forget to talk about. So just wanted to make this video to give you guys the information. As I said, once again, I don't want to bash Windows Firewall. If you have a specific reason for using it, more power to you, feel free to do so. But I'm just presenting a scenario so that we can all make better decisions. Please like and share the video if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to the PC Security channel for more awesome cybersecurity content. Check out our website. This is Leo. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, stay informed, stay secure.